Good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to the end of the week here on Crafters TV where we're in the middle show. Where we're going to take a step back, we're going to relax, we're going to be nice and calm, we're going to craft along for the next two hours. Now, if you are one of our new viewers here at Crafters Companion on Crafters TV, the craft along is exactly as it says within the title. It is where you can craft along in real time. Now, what we tend to do, and uh, I say we tend to do, it is what we do when it comes to a launch day collection. Anything from three, four, five weeks after it launches, we will come here, one of us on the team, and we will do a craft along. So it gives you the opportunity to purchase said launch day collection, get at home, have a play, and then join in when it comes to the craft along. Now, you could be crafting along live, like we're going to be doing here today, or like all of our shows here on Crafters TV you're able to watch back on our website or of course on our YouTube channel that's always the best place to go you can watch 24 7 continuously or you can cherry pick the shows that you want to watch if you are cherry picking come back and then you can then watch this craft along and do it in your own time now what we also are enabling you to do as well maybe you didn't get the collection when it first launched not always but you're very lucky today, we still have the full collection for you to then purchase. Now, as I said, you can come back and do that craft along. Okay, it won't be live at the time, by the time you get the product, but at least then you'll be able to come back and pause, reverse, play, rewind, all those different steps, and then you can craft along at your heart's content. Now, when it comes to today's item, it's all about the mesmerizing glitter paste. Now, you're going to find these across on the website. On the website, we've currently got our January sale going on, where we've got up to 75% off. Now, not only have we got up to 75% off, we've got 500 lines there for you to check out. Now, when it comes to checking out, once you've then selected the items that you want, and once you've signed in, of course, if you're in Club Inspire, your Club Inspire uh, discount will then be deducted on top of that as well. So it may be up to 75% off, but then you're going to get that little bit more, depending, of course, on what level you are at Club Inspire. Also, while you're on the website, we have got our uh, additional sale going on as well, our outlet sale that you can also have a little look at as well. But when you log into the website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu, you're going to see the header. As soon as you go in there, you're going to see the January sale. And then as that page starts to turn, you're going to see all the other tags here that you can then click into on the website. Within the website, have a look at Shop the Day. That's where you're going to see everything featured from Wake Up Call this morning, where we feature what we're going to be showcasing throughout today. But there you're going to find lots of items relating to our craft along today and then our Friday night masterclass. And I say night time, it will be night time here in the UK. But for you guys stateside, some of you, it's going to be afternoon, early afternoon. Now, when it comes to the craft along, we need someone to be crafting along, showing us what we're going to be doing. Now, when it comes to the items that's going to be used, you're going to find the shopping list across on the social. So you can check them out, get everything ready to go, and then you can be crafting along as well. We do have Susie on the socials when it comes to this craft along. So if there is anything, if you need to recap any of the steps, if you need to ask anything regarding the steps within the craft along, just ask Susie and Susie will send them across. We've got Christine Mahoney's in saying, Hello again, looking forward to seeing this amazing project. We've got Carletta saying, everyone, uh, good afternoon everyone from a very cold snowy Arkansas. Lois is in saying hello everyone from Ohio. We've got Pat in saying hello everyone, happy Friday from New Jersey to all my crafty friends. Well, happy Friday to you too. And we've got Mary Beth Doyle as well saying hi again everyone from uh, Minnesota. It's snowing. I think a lot of you guys stateside, depending where you are of course, have been hit hard with the snow. So, if that is the case, I hope you're staying in nice and warm nice and cozy and then you're going to be crafting along with this phenomenal craft along with the mesmerizing glitter paste now before i go over the glitter paste we of course need to well she needs no introduction if you watch wake up call you already know who's by my side today but to doing an absolutely terrific phenomenal craft along she's also going to be going over the shopping list oh um i, I can't actually i can't remember her name james just go across to her <laughs> Oh, Debbie, that's what it is. Gosh, <laughs> With forgot the personalised apron on there. If you can't wake up call, you'll totally get it. Yeah, I've got my little apron on, because we, we might get a little bit messy. Are you ready to see the craft along project? Yes. Project? For those who haven't seen it on the socials, for those who missed it this morning, uh, this is going to be our finished item, where we are making a lovely decorated box. We're going to do a little bit of the mesmerising glitter paste onto the acetate, um, and a nice little tag on there, using one of those stencils as well. And then we're going to decorate a beautiful beautiful candle 
with those mesmerizing pastes and i did a bit of two color ways because i've got a bit of green and purple in my choice of colors uh, but we're going to decorate a beautiful candle and have a little nice gift box by the end of our real time craft along project now shall we do the list Please, shall we get the baby. list out of the way because um now, normally we, we give you a few weeks to get this together. <laughs> um, we only launched them last week. However, some of you might have already got them. If you haven't, you could use your other pastes um, and you could use any stencils as well. However, the, li the list for what I've actually particularly used is here as follows. So what you're going to need are your mesmerising glitter paste. Now, I've personally used Mystical Ocean and the Wood Nymph. Uh, but of course, this is your craft along project. You can use whatever you want. Uh, mesmer uh, sorry, the mesmerizing glitter paste stencil. I've used the laurel leaves. Again, there's a lot in that collection. You can you can tweak this to your heart's content. These are the, just the ones that I've used. So if you want to copy this project, that's the one I've used. I've used a just for me mini die, a sentiment tag punch that we had out recently. I say recently. I think it was last year we launched that one. Mm -hmm. uh, the ultimate paper pads. I use botanic garden and rainbow pearl. You of course could use whatever paper pad you want. My water reactive inks that go with the colours that I've used in the mesmerising glitter paste, crushed velvet and grasshopper. And to apply that, I use ink daubers. So the finger ink daubers I used in this particular one. Now we have another list. We have got the multi-purpose cardstock. It's one of my go-to chosen cardstocks. You know how much I, I love it. I use it all the time when I'm construction. Construction, sorry. A5 heavyweight acetate, uh, palette knife, score master, uh, the scoreboard, the large guillotine or small guillotine, whichever one you want to use, or purpose glue. Red liner tape. This is construction, so that will feature some red liner tape in there. Um, stick and spray, which is the repositional spray. A hot glue gun. I've used a pillar candle for this one in particular, what you can see there in the background. And I've used some ribbon from my stash. So you can use any ribbon that will match your colours. That is it. That's all you need. No machines involved this time. That's a strange awesome. one for me. That's a weird one for me, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but that's everything you need. So I'm going to get myself ready. Excellent. We have got a special guest. We do indeed. Looking forward to this one. Thank you, Debbie. We'll come back to Debbie just shortly. But as Debbie said, we do have a guest, a very special guest, someone that we absolutely love and adore. We've got her all the way from the Isle of Wight. If only we could be in the studio, but not quite. So with the joys of technology, we've got Lynn Blackledge, which many of you will know as hashtag go live granny. Afternoon, Lynn. Hello. There How are you are. Today? Cheers. Go live granny. Look at that. Look at oh, that. I love the daily boppers. The daily boppers. <laughs> That's fun. That is so, so fun. Are you well today, Lynn? I'm very well, thank you, but very rushed. Are you because, rushed? Well, rushed because I didn't know till last night I was doing, I was possibly doing the craft along. Uh -huh. I didn't have it confirmed till this morning. <laughs> and then I had to run out. I had to go and buy myself a candle. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> and I only got in at two o'clock. So <laughs> it's wow. been a bit of a rush, but I think I've got there. <laughs> You've got it all. Excellent. Now, did you manage to see the craft along earlier on? Or well, you've just seen it there with Debbie. Incredible project, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it's lovely. Excellent. And are you going to do exactly as Debbie's doing? Are you maybe going to mix it up slightly or change it? I'm going to, I'm going to have to mix it up. So I, I've never used glitter paste okay. before, but I've got loads of crafters complaining glitter paste. So I've gone with what I've got because it was a rush yeah. job. Um, so I've got various colours here. I've got various... Um, uh, I've got, I'm going to use the... What's this one? Oh, yes. Ooh. Neon Dreams. Nice. That, and, and this because they've just, you know, I've just got those there. And I'm, I've pinched out of the craft club, my latest craft club, so I'm going to use that stencil there. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. I love how you're mixing and matching there, Lynn. That's going to look absolutely <laughs> fab. Cannot wait to see your take on Debbie's craft along. Uh, as always, I know you're familiar with the craft alongs. If there is anything, if you need Debbie to have a little recap or ask anything, we've got Susie T on the social, but we've got Nicola and we've also got James in the gallery. So just let James know and then we'll bring you back in. But then we'll dot into you throughout the show and see how you're getting on. Excellent. Thank awesome. you. You're welcome. We shall see you again just shortly, Lynn. Uh, right, we are going to go to Debbie just in a moment, but for those of you who haven't yet got the mesmerising glitter paste, what I would say, there's options on the website. Go into shop the day where you're going to find all the stencils, you're going to find the tools. We might do them later on, but for the time being, we'll just do the glitter paste so we can go straight to Debbie here. And as she said, just launch. Press 
freshly launched with Leanne and Ben, and this is your eight-piece mesmerizing glitter paste. Now these, compared to our previous ones, these are chunkier, but not only are they chunkier, these hit a different way of light when you turn them, when you twist them, when you bend them, when you move them and manipulate them with on your card and when you're on your project. Sometimes what you can get is two colors, three colors, but you've got that instant hit of a variety. Chunkier, as I said as well, so it's making it a lot more tactile, but you've got the eight of them. You've got all eight of them at £65 or $79. We've kept them at the launch day price, giving you a saving of 10%. If you are platinum, however, that comes down to £52 or $63.20. You're going to find them on Shop the Day on the website, .co.uk.com or .eu. As I keep urging you, if you're not in Club Inspire yet, do please join. It's completely free, but it does mean that you're going to get 20% off your very first order. So if this is going to be your first order today after joining Club Inspire you're going to get them at that purple box price at £52.63.20 uh, and they go on a multitude of different mediums. Mediums such as acetate like Debbie's going to be doing within her craft along so therefore I think we're just going to dive straight in we're going to head to Debbie and let's crack on with our craft along. Absolutely um, now because it's glitter paste and if you've I mean, I think Corinne did the last craft along with glitter paste, which were the original ones. Uh, you will know that they need to dry. So we're going to get all of the pasting out of the way first before we do the construction. This construction will be the latter part of the, of the craft along um, because we need it to dry as much as we possibly can um, throughout this two hour period. So we are going to start with acetate and then we're going to go to the candle and then we'll do the construction. Okay. And that is just because we want to get that um, glitter paste down set and give it a little bit of drying time. Um, I don't want Lynn to rush this. If Lynn feels that she needs to let it dry naturally, um, you could always post a picture later Later on um, and just show us like the the side panels and things like that if you in your candle once you've done that uh, because we do need to let it dry as natural as possible we can speed it up a little bit um, so I'm going to show you um, little tips that you can do with that as well however wow. the first thing we're going to do Craig is we're going to chop our acetate to size um, because that's the bit that we're going to start with first so just want you to bear in mind so it's going to be a little bit is it discombobulated is that the right word there that it I'm thinking be piggledy, of? Piggledy. You got to pick up the yes. It's got a little bit go out of sync with out itself. Of sync. Out, out of, of sync. sync. Yeah. Um, but it's only in order for us to get that glitter paste pop down straight away. Um, so you will need your heavyweight acetate. Now, if you've got our acetate, um, ours, I'll show you the one that I've used. Um, and I do believe this is back in stock now, Craig, because it's been out of stock for a while. Um, we've got the heavyweight acetate, which is the 25 pieces, which is the A, um, A51. Um, and it always has a protective film over the top. Every single sheet in there has protective film on. So you need to remove that film, discard of that if you need be, um, because these are the two pieces that we need to get ourselves started with. Okay. Um, so that's the bit that I'm going to peel back. I've already pre-peeled mine. Um, people ask me about how you know. You will know with the state with your um, with your acetate the bit that looks the cloudy, cloudy side. Um, that's the area where we keep that. It's not. Okay. It's not on both sides. It's just on one. Now I'm going to make this a little bit easier in terms of the the length of the box. We're not going to chop anything into the length. Always difficult when you're using acetate. <laughs> it's like the Invisible Man. You can't see it. Uh, but we're going to bring in our scoreboard because what we're going to do on the short side is we're going to chop this down to a four inch. Um, strip. Okay. Now I can't because of the nature of A5 I can't get two out of one. Um, so all you need to do is make sure and you can actually see it better on here um, you can see the four inch mark we're going to chop that down to four inch so we've got a four inch strip but we're not taking anything off the top because we're going to do all those measurements so that it makes it a bit easier when we're using A4 cardstock and acetate we are having to chop anything down I didn't okay. want to over complicate things today and um, so with your second piece we're going to do exactly the same so we're going to take it to the four inch mark and we're going to have two strips now of the the full length of the A5 um, back chopped down to four inches um, and they're the two pieces that we need now I'm going to move that to one side for the time being what I'm going to bring in now is my scoreboard and we're going to score this before we apply the glitter paste. Got you. And the reasoning behind that is, I'm going to try and construct this in this two hours to show you how to put it all together. Right. If at this stage you don't want to do that and you want to see how the whole process works, get all your measurements and things like that, you absolutely can. Um, 
because you need it to be dry before you start before you start constructing it constructing it okay. the box that is now i'm looking forward you know i've just been doing a spot of filming i think i've left me <clears throat> i think i've left my scoring tool at the other side i'll be back because no i've got a spare problem. one this is why i carry about a thousand in my bag craig Lots i'm forever putting these little devils down and losing them <laughs> um but we need to score an half inch mark into our um acetate so you're going to put it on that short side so you can see that four inch mark now i'm not going to struggle this side I find that a tight squeeze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this down and I'm going to score it at three and a half inches. It just means I, I'm giving myself a little bit of an helping hand. So three and a half inches, score that down. Okay. Now at this stage, I don't want you to, to reinforce that score line because we are going to be applying one of the stencils over the top. Now, if you were to reinforce that score line, and if I just pop that down there, if I just show you now, you've got a little bit of an extra part here. So when you lay it flat, it can affect your stenciling with right, your glitter yeah, paste. Right, yeah, see what you mean. So I would personally do that bit afterwards, OK? Do the score before, but do the actual burnishing afterwards. And that makes so sense. Again, yeah, just makes a little bit more... I'm trying to make things a little bit easy. Crafting shouldn't be hard, should it? it should no, be it nice shouldn't, and, no. Nice and stress-free. Um, so again, I'm going to go at that three-and-a-half-inch mark. Right, so so. I think Lynn's got a question, so yeah. we're just going to um, go back no to problem. Lynn. No problem, that's what we're here for. Absolutely. Right, so Lynn, what can we do to help you? Um, I've actually got, across the top of my screen, I've got that th this is a device that can record, and it's blocking my view of some of what Debbie's doing, so I don't know if you can do that, for, remove that from the studio. Ah, mm, we're going to have that's to leave. That's a technical, that's a technical that is, one for yeah. our James. That one. That is. That's for our gallery. That one. See if they can manage it that is. one. And the other thing is, uh, the, what was the measurement of the acetate? The acetate. So, Lynn, it's the full length of the acetate. So the full. The is, full is it an A4? Was it A4? Uh, ours is A5. Have you got the A5? I've got a piece of heat resistant acetate. So I don't you would know chop if that's that down okay. to eight and a quarter by four. So if you haven't got A5, it would be um, eight and a quarter inches by yeah. four. Um, for those okay. who don't have the A5. Yeah. Good question, that, Lynn, actually, because there might be people out there Thank that haven't got A5 acetate. So, yes, it's eight and yes. a quarter by four, and you're going to score right. on that four inch, the, uh, the three and a half inch mark. Yeah, right. brilliant. Fabulous. Awesome. Thank Love you. a good question. Just to say as well, Lynn, the guys in the gallery, they are just working on just giving you a helping hand to get rid of uh, whatever that icon is just up on the screen so you can see Debbie clearly. So they're working on that they, for you. Actually, when, when we're both side by side, it's it's higher up. But when okay. I've got the full screen of you, it's it's across the top. Right, T.O. Yeah. The guys are there. But we've got the big guns in. We've got Liam in, so he's also going to have a look and help as well. Good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Debbie. No problem, no problem at all. Now, we're going to do the glitter paste. So I'm going to use um, a couple of the colours. I chose um, the Mystical... I can never remember I can never remember its name. Let me get it out. So I've got the... Um, Mystical Ocean. Thank you. Mystical Ocean and the um, Wood Nymph is the two that I've used. And that's just gone with the colour that I've chosen for my paper pad. So you can see I've got that gorgeous green tones and uh, the gold tone, including in the blue one, that lovely uh, Mystical Ocean. It's got the blue, the pinks and the purples running through there as well. I absolutely love these pastes. Um, when you're choosing your pastes, always think about your... Um, so for me, with my box, if I just show you what I mean, um, I chose uh, the gorgeous purple and I chose this one. Uh, that was, and it, it is the other side that I've been using, the B side. A little bit of the A side, but a little bit of the B side. So I thought about the colours that were in there, and I chose the colours that then matched my papers. I okay. make life easy for myself. Choose your paper, and you'll find a paste that works with it. Um, so that's my own personal preference in how I've chosen um, to colour match this one. Now I'm going to use the laurel leaves in my stencil. I know our lovely Lynn has got a different stencil in this one. Um, and the ones that I'm going to be using not the large today um, we are going to be using the strip one and also let's get it out we're going to use the uh, for the candle decoration the single um, design of that laurel leaves 
Now, I've already popped onto the back of mine, and if you saw me this morning, I've told you that um, I've already used this spray, repositional spray, onto the back, um, but it's been used a few times. So I know it's still got some tackiness to it, but, and this is really important for this stage of this one. When you are using this uh, for your acetate, um, you will get some residue if you are going to squirt that on there right now and then use it for the first time. Right, okay. So me personally, um, I would squirt, and when we say squirt, can I just show you the squirting method? Yeah, yeah. Just so that you can get an idea. And I'll do it with a smaller one, because like I said, I've already got some tackiness to this. Um, but when you, it's, it's what we call, I think Leanne calls it a, like a perfume waft. Waft. Oh, that's a good way of thinking Like a little pst, not a pst. That's my description of it. So what you're not wanting to do is go elf leather and t put tons of it in the back of it. What you want to do is you want to do a little bit of a waft. So I usually put a little bit in the air and catch it. Oh. <laughs> That's how I do mine. But you can just do a little. And I say, can you, can you see what I mean? It's not a lot. No, it's can not a lot. That? It's not like a, and I'll not do it because I don't want to do it, but not like a pss. Like your air fit, or when you're trying to get a wasp or something, a fly with yes. the... Yes. Yeah. I just want a little bit. Actually, to be fair, though, on this one, because it's going on my candle, I need a little bit more. So I can do a couple of little extra squirts. If you were going to then, and you need to let it get that tacky stage of the 30 seconds to a minute, the reason I say that is because when you put it onto things like acetate, and I'm going to try and put... In fact, let me bring that craft mat in for a second. I know this is not on the shopping list, but if you've got one, um, it's a great one to use, although saying this, it's our lovely Lillian's. Shall I put a bit of black down on there? <laughs> Shall we go with a little bit of black underneath? Our lovely Lillian's being there. Uh, there we go. I don't know if that's helped or not. <laughs> uh, but just so I can show you yeah, that if you've got a very sticky back, you are going to get some residue onto here. Now, our repositional spray does not usually leave a residue, however... On acetate, it can absolutely do that. So what I'm just going to say to you is when you're using this, make sure that that is a tacky and not wet through. So, um, because otherwise you will get that residue left behind on it. Now I'm going to try and put this down. I'm going to revert back to the mat. Shall I put, do you think white will work underneath it, Craig? I think it what should. What do you think? Shall we try it? Yeah, let's give it just a shot. Just to try it, because I know it's very difficult when you're using acetate. Uh, to actually see there just I'm not sure if it's going to work or not but we can try that now I want you to think about where you're popping your stencil I want you to ignore the half inch that we've we've scored onto because that bit's going to be tucked around your box that's going to be part of the box that attaches to the other four sides so what we want to do is when we're placing this stencil is we want to try and get into the middle of the three and a half that's left right there and I'm going to take it up to the top because at the bottom, I'm going to be having the box onto there. So I'm not too worried about it. Now, I have a little look at it this way. It's always easy for me if I take it to the, to the back part of it and try and do it that way. Because we want to try and centralise it into that three and a half mark, not the four. Can you see that? That's the four. Um, so I'm quite happy. Yeah, I think I might just, in fact, let me just move it up a little bit more. This bit, I think it depends on how you want to decorate your box and how much of it you want to be shown. So I'm going to come in, yeah, take it to about there. So it's a little bit of guesswork, no measuring, it's just a little bit of a guesswork. Okay. Um, and then lay that flat and then make sure that the tackiness, uh, so that your um, stencil is firmly attached to your acetate. And then we're going to bring in our spatula, you're going to choose your chosen colour, or you could have an ombre effect. Um, so you could do, at this stage, you could pop a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the green, a little bit of the blue, or go with the one colour all the way through. Um, I'm going to see how I feel with this one, Greg. Might chop it up a little bit. Might change it up a little bit from the original. Yeah, you could do that, Absolutely, you? why not? So I'm going to take off now the uh, top. So I've got my top part, pop that into there. Uh, and peel that back. Oh, every time I look at something like super, super beautiful. Um, and in fact, actually, come on, let's let's have a little bit of a let's change it up slightly with my colours. I might do a little bit of an ombre effect there. There we go. So I've got both my paste ready. Now I don't know if you caught the show this morning or if you caught the long show with our lovely Leanne. Um, we're not going to scrape it like we would normally do. So we're not, going to, we're not going to scrape it on. Can you hear that sound? We're not going to do it with this. We're going to get a nice bit onto our palette knife and we're going to just take it 
and glide it along. And there is a reason behind that. Um, it's chunky glitter in there. It's not the fine glitter particles. Now, did our, Leah, uh, did our lovely um, Lynn say she'd got the regular pastes or did she have the... I think it was the regular one, she said, The regular yeah. one. So Lynn could get away with the, square, you know, the butter on toast. Um, this is for anybody that's using our latest ones, which are our chunkier um, glitter. The formation's mostly the same. However, there's the colour changing aspect to this, the mesmerising part of it. So, what was that? What's Did you hear that? At the back, yeah. That was loud. Um, apologies for anybody who just said that loud bang. Not sure what that is. I don't think it was from our building. I think it was from, from next the door. next door. Yeah, there's yeah. like lorries and factories. It's very and loud. Very, very it was loud. loud. Yeah, very loud. Um, now, what you're wanting to do is you're not wanting. Can you see? There's a little gap there. You don't want any gaps for this. So I'm going to leave a little bit, bit more onto me. Pay, uh, me paste loaded up onto me and just pat that in, and then smooth that across. Now, we will take off the excess at the end, not, not until we've, we've done all this, but let's have, let's have a little mix up. Oh, oh, that's the wood nymph, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Stunning, that one's absolutely it is gorgeous. beautiful. And when you do, because you can hear there's no, can you hear there's no scraping sounds? I've got no scraping with mine, because um, I am just literally tickling it across that stencil. Um, oh, I'm not gonna lie, I love this color. It's very hard not to not to decide which one to use, to be fair, Craig. And then I'm going to come back down and finish off with that lovely... Um, I think I'm going to have to get, get... Yeah, I think you can tell which is the colour I've used most. You've used quite a lot, that one. I have, one because your I absolutely love the uh, mystical ocean. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's because I'm drawn to the purples and the pinks and the blue tones in there. Um, and again, I'm going to come on and just spread that along. Now, I can see there that little bit at the bottom could have benefited from perhaps another little waft of... Um, repositional spray because I noticed it was flapping. We don't want no flapping with our stencils. We don't. Um, however, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. I'm just gonna make sure. Now, because it's acetate, I'm just gonna lift it for a second, Craig. And I don't mean lift it off. I mean lift it off from the piece of cardstock that I've got down, because I wanna lift it up to the light to make sure I've got no, I can just see a little teeny bit just there. That I've got no gaps. There we go. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to peel this back. And I think you may have seen on Leanne's show uh, when she launched these, it's a quick, swift movement off. <laughs> satisfying. <laughs> it's so satisfying. It's absolutely beautiful. It really, really is. And that gorgeous design. Now, we're going to try and let that dry for a second because we've got the second piece to do. So I'm just going to move that to one side. However, before I do, and I'm not going to stick that straight down to my acetate, I need to wash this off and I need okay. to get the excess off. And the reason for that being, Craig, is if I was to slip, pop that down right now, all I'm going to be getting, and I, you can see, because I've even done the ombre effect, I can actually pick up and put back into there. Okay, and to be fair, it it's not really going to be too much of a... Not too much of an hardship if you get a little bit mixed up into that. No, I think because you've got that hit of different colours, don't you, when you twist yeah. and turn it, if you do get a little bit of cross-contamination, it's not going to matter. You're not going to notice. Absolutely. And I'm going to scrape off as much as I possibly can with that excess. And because I am using the two, what I'll do is, the next time I use that, I'll just take off from there to start with. Um, but what I want to do now is just... Oh, hoo, hoo, I think I might use that later on. Um, look at me waist. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, let's put that to one side because I think we'll use it. But I do need to wash that next stage before I come on to use the second piece because if I don't, everything that's tucked underneath or that I've spread when I've scraped it off will transfer straight onto there and you won't get a clean image. So the important part to remember is when you're doing your second piece of acetate, make sure you've got another clean stencil. Okay. okay? Now, I'll just wipe that off. This is when I splish and splash absolutely everywhere, Craig. And then I'm just going to dab that down and I'm going to clean that up with a little bit of towel. I'm just going to hold that to one side. So whether it's the stencils, whether it's the tools, whatever it is that you're using, you always clean them straight after when it comes to Absolutely. the paste. Absolutely. And the same goes for your, your mats and things like that as well. Now I can see I've still got some... <laughs> this, this has been lasting for... Can you see it's still tacky? Can you hear it? You can hear it. Yeah, even fingers. though it's been in the bath. Now, if you feel at some stage that you need to add a little bit more, again, 
it would be waft it in. And the only reason being, again, and again, I'm not going to slap that straight on because if I do, it's going to leave residue straight onto your acetate. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing we want because the difficult part there is how do you get it off acetate? Off cardstock, it's absolutely fine, but off acetate, it's a lot more trickier. It's a sticky substance true, at the end of the day. True, right enough. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm just going to bring a spare piece of cardstock back underneath there again. Pop my acetate down. And then I'm just going to make sure that's nice and... Yeah, perfect. And again, exactly the same. I'm just going to repeat that. So again, what I'm going to do is try and place that, and I'll, I think I'll turn it that way again to make it a bit easy for myself. Um, I'm going to place it into roughly around the centre of that three and a half panel, not that four. Okay. Just try and remember that when you're doing this. And again, make sure that's stuck. Um, at this stage, it's important to make sure you've got none of those lifting, because if they lift, the chances are that the paste will literally seep underneath, and that's the last thing we want. And then we're just going to repeat that process again. So we're going to take off. Now I've gone straight in with the one that has got the mix of pastes. This says, um, you know how we get our Spectrum Noir brayer? Now, I don't use mine. I hardly use mine. That would be a good time to use to push down your um, stencil onto your acetate, Absolutely, wouldn't it? Or your card yeah. stock, so yeah. that you don't get any of that seeping uh, underneath. So you'll probably see Corinne and Jan do that a lot. They use their brayers for um, when they're gluing mats and layers, uh, and they want a nice... Because sometimes with your hands, it depends on where you've gone. You might miss a bit. With a brayer, the chances are you aren't going to miss any of that, which is well, why you'll see Corinne, especially Corinne and Jan, uh, they use theirs a heck of a lot mm -hmm. um, for that. So that's a good shout-out, Craig, that to seal that um, repositional glue uh, and making sure you've got that coverage all over. Great shout-out. Nice little top tip. That's what we're all about here at Crafters. Giving the nice top little top tips. Again, can you hear there's no scraping? I'm no, not scraping not. that along there. And I'm making sure I've got a nice coverage across that stencil. I can see, again, it's just lifting here, so I need to be very careful at this, this point because um, clearly I didn't do that, Greg. <laughs> Perhaps I should have done, and then I wouldn't have had this problem. But I should be okay. It's just a beautiful colour. Beautiful. Gorgeous, I would it? say exactly what Debbie said within wake up call. Our screens, the way we show it, does not do them justice. No, does not I'm looking do them at it justice. now, and all I can see is the pinks, the blues, the purples all in that one, the gold, the green, the yellow tones in that one. Um, and I know it doesn't do it justice on camera, but seriously, it's absolutely exquisite. Um, again, when you're removing this, all you're going to do is hold down to your acetate and pull back as fast as you can to get that lovely. Um, Removal, removal, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, with your uh, beautiful paste. Oh, my God, can't wait to see that dry. Uh, so I'm just going to move that to one side and, again, pop that down onto a spare piece of cardstock and I'll take off and pop that back into that pot with the uh, beautiful wood nymph. And then coming into this one, that gorgeous mystical ocean, and, yeah, definitely, Craig, I think I've definitely got to get another pot because... Uh, I can see it starting to look at all of that being because, used, yeah. um, I've used it a heck of a lot, and but, I mean a heck of a lot. But that's the thing that, you know, you've done your prep with it, you've used it with another layers and that, and, yeah. you know, you're still using it now with your craft along. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before I actually put that back on, though, I am going to go in. Spatula is really handy to get into all those nooks and crannies uh, and literally take that and make sure that it's all nice and laid out there. Um, and again, it self-levels itself when it's laid flat, Craig. So um, I know that I'm good to go, but what I want to make sure is that I've got all, all off the tops because this is when your pots can stick together as well. We need to remember the glitter paste. It's a really strong adhesive in there. Um, so when you're using that, just make sure, I'm just making sure I've got all the, you can see I've got some left over. There we go. Um, a nice sealed finish, seal that up. And then we'll pop that back on. Now we'll come, I'm just leaving it at the side because I'm going to be decorating with the candle as well in a second. Um, and then I'm just going to repeat that process. Just wipe off that excess though before I do. Um, into my green one. Now, this, this weekend, it's not often that we, when I say that we get weekends off where we don't do some form of prep or anything like that for work, Debbie. This weekend, I'm determined to take off. However... Watching you with the glitter paste today. <laughs> I've got a funny feeling that at some point over the weekend, the glitter paste are going to be out and I'm going to be playing. 
I know. I will go to take this week. Oh, Craig, you've got to be. Uh, I don't admit this. No, you admit um, it. So I have to. Um, I have to at some point during the weekend. I need to take down. No, Debbie. Debbie. Oh, I don't believe in any of that superstitious claptrap, Nicola. Um, I've still got my Christmas tree up. <laughs> hey, yeah, I know, I know. What day are we in? Oopsie daisy. Oh, um, I know. I, I can't, Craig. Like I love it. 30, I just keep looking at it thinking I don't want to take it down just yet. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. I'm, I'm not ready to take it down. Um, and can I tell you, I was away for the, like, I went away for the new year uh, to my daughter's. I went down to Bristol. I mean, we were poorly, but I, it's a different change of wall scenery, isn't it? Um, so it doesn't matter that I spent. So when I came back, I was like, and then I've been working. And I just physically. There's a thousand lights on there, about a thousand baubles, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I need a full day off. You're like a and whole week late after when it's originally or should oh, be it's coming fine. down. fine. I'm not superstitious. Although my son did laugh at me and he said to me, God, Mum, we're the only ones with it still up. I'm like, they don't need to know I've got my blinds <laughs> shut. Just don't, looks like fairy lights in the background when the blinds are shut. No one knows. Although if my neighbours are watching, they'll now know. <laughs> Oops, um, is all I'm going to say. Um, oops. <laughs> so, but it's coming down this weekend. However, I have got a lot of prep to do because I'm here Tuesday and Wednesday, um, after the boss on Tuesday, of mm -hmm. course. Um, so I need to get a bit of prep done. So the plan is tomorrow, because if I don't do it tomorrow, Craig, it'll be Monday. Right, got you. So I need to get it done. Um, don't judge me, will no. you, anybody? It, it's funny, just quickly as well, because I know you want to move on to your next bit, Debbie, but me and Debbie are the both opposite this year. <laughs> I had mine down on the 1st of January. <laughs> usually I'm later in having taken all of mine down, and, you know, Deb, Debbie's not usually even got it up, never mind actually <laughs> not taking it down. So we're the complete opposite, me and you, this year. <laughs> I just couldn't help it. I'll tell you, I just could not help it. I can understand I, um, why, though, yeah. It's so pretty. It is pretty. Yours it's is pretty. It's glittery. It's silver sparkles. It just looks lovely when it's twinkling. Um, so, yeah, but it, it's coming down this weekend. It is, I promise. It does need to. I hate to say it, Debbie, but it does need to. <laughs> I could potentially just leave it there till next year, yeah, couldn't could I? Do. I could, yeah. I could potentially leave it and then save me a whole heap of trouble. Decorate it for Valentine's, decorate it for Easter, decorate it for summertime, decorate it for autumn, Halloween, bonfire if you can, and then Christmas, there you go. <laughs> oh, Craig, it were a labour of love putting it up. <laughs> I mean, I told you, I, I'd not been feeling it on the back end of putting yeah, it up when I was pulling, and it took me an... <laughs> it took me hours to get it up, so the thought of getting it down is like filling me with utter dread. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why. Uh, now, I want to give myself a little bit of an helping hand. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not using heat-resistant acetate, so I'm going to flick this over with a quick waft of a bit of a heat. Ideally, ideally, you need to let this dry naturally. Um, so, but I am going to waft it over because this isn't heat-resistant, so there's a danger it will crinkle. Right. So I'm going to waft. Waft away. Normally, I would stick to one area and work my way up. But I'm not, I'm going to waft. And it's just so I get a little bit of an helping hand. So please note that if you are using heat resistant acetate, you'll be fine. If you're using an ordinary acetate, every weight like mine, yes, you can do it, but just be aware that it could crinkle if you leave it, the, you know, if you leave it in one area. However, I just want to give myself an helping hand because I do want to get this construction together. Like I said, if Lynn doesn't want to do that and she wants to just technically leave it to dry naturally and stick it all together once we've done all the measurements, the cutting and the mats and the layers uh, and the actual construction part of it, you're absolutely fine to do that and do that at a later date. Now, I'm not risking it anymore, Craig, because um, I don't want to uh, ruin that, uh, but it just gives me a little bit of a, an helping hand. But I'm going to put those two pieces to one side. So right now, you've got your lovely acetate. And because I didn't use the excess um, repositional tape, uh, sorry, spray, mm -hmm. um, I've, I've made sure there's no uh, residue left over there. Now, I can see I've just smudged it. Oh, Debbie, what are you like? So I'm just going to get my pokey tool. I'm just going to take that off. I feel better now, Craig. Perfectionist. Um, there's always ways and means if you have a little tiny wee accident. Um, and I just wanted to make sure, because Debbie's a little bit clumsy sometimes when it comes to these pastes, I'm just going to push that back into place. And rather than ruin that piece, 
you can't even see it now, can no, you? No. So I'm going to leave those to dry and pop those to one place. Now, the next stage we're going to do is we are going to take our candle and we're going to decorate the candle. However, I need to go and put this somewhere safe so I don't get to my fingers in there and I'll let that dry because we can come back to that um, towards the end of the craft along uh, to put that together because it should be touch dry and enable me to put that together. Okay, okay, perfect. Well, what we'll do, Debbie, if it's all right with you, we'll take a little bit of a break. Let anyone catch up that needs to uh, catch up or maybe nip and get a drink or maybe you have been shopping across on the website. We'll let you check out your baskets. Remember, you can grab hold of the mesmerising glitter paste. We've kept it at the launch day price, £65 or $79 for the eight tubs here. It is chunkier when it comes to the granules, the glitter that's inside there, but you've got that saving of 10%. Your platinum comes down to £52 or $63. Check out the website, .co.uk.com or .eu. Have a look at Shop the Day. You're going to find all the stencils, including the one that Debbie's using. You're going to find the tools as well, including the ones that Debbie is using as well. So we'll let you uh, get caught up if you need to get caught up. If you need to check out your baskets, we'll let you check out your baskets and we'll be back just in a couple of minutes. If you love Crafters TV, we've made it easy for you to watch us wherever you are. Whether you catch us on your tablet or take us with you on your mobile phone, it's easy to watch us anywhere. From here to here. Maybe don't watch us here. It would be easy to watch us here. Probably the easiest place to watch us is here. Crafters TV, with you wherever you are. Hi, I'm Ben from Crafters TV. As you may know, we've just launched an amazing new website, our new home of Papercraft to house all of your crafty needs. And as we've had a bit of a makeover, I'm here today to show you how to check out Crafters TV on our sparkling new website, including how to watch live, catch up with previous shows, and how to view the latest schedules. So. Let's get started. First, go to the Crafters Companion homepage. Select the correct location at the top of the page. Click the Crafters TV icon on the top right hand side of your screen. To watch the show live on the website, click the Watch Now button in the middle of your screen. You'll be taken to the relevant show page where you can watch the show, shop the show, and shop the day at your leisure. To view the Crafters TV schedule, click the View Our Schedule button in the middle of your screen. You'll be taken to the TV schedule where you can browse each date plus all of the shows that are on that day. You can then click on each show to be taken to a page where you can watch and shop the show. If you want to catch up on a previous show, hit the catch up button on the purple Crafters TV bar. Then you can scroll down to see all of the previous Crafters TV shows from recent days. If you're looking for something specific, you can click the craft expert, craft area, shows and date filters just above the list of shows. Take a moment to browse until you see the show you want to catch up on, then click onto the show. You will then be taken to the catch up page where you're free to watch the show and check out all of the crafty goodies on our shop the show and shop the day pages. Enjoy. Many of our viewers bring up time and time again and that's our wax seal seal gate. Thinking though it might not work as well because I put too much. <laughs> I've forgotten to put me, um, <laughs> me thing in place. <laughs> <laughs> because I have a way of words, but I think that doesn't engage with that and can come out all wrong. Water. That, that wasn't the one you king. just washed your brush in, was it? Sorry. Yes. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it wasn't, was it? It was. Are you kidding? I'm going to have to say, it's a slip of the tongue. I'm going to say it's maybe to do with my Scottish accent. I'm maybe going to say it's because of Mr. Uh, ben Mosby. He is, well, yeah, he doesn't help matters. Fire 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 um, I've made pots that have exploded when I fired them. I've done zips in inside out. It happens to everybody. We've all spilt our glitter all over our project or knocked the water over. 
Do I? I've just noticed I've got my dress on inside out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was messing about doing some backgrounds with the sparkling, took the lid off it and managed to catch the pot somehow and the whole thing came towards me, down my front, across my lap, onto the floor. I went to reach for the water and, you know, do the, the, the tapping with the, the, and so there was less tapping and more sort of a tsunami. Um, <laughs> I've got some... <gasps> We've got Lynn Mortensen saying good afternoon, Debbie Craig and all the CCTV team. Uh, yes, we've got Nicola in the gallery. She is uh, directing, no, she's not, she's producing. And then we've got uh, James who is directing. We've got um, Nugs is out there. there. She's just gone past there. Tracy is in. We've got Deborah saying enjoy. Oh, this was about last night. Deborah's saying enjoyed your live stream last night, Craig. I can't wait till Monday. Yeah, don't miss out on the launch on Monday. We've got Zoe Carver on YouTube is saying, actually, in case you wonder, if you see my Instagram story earlier on, and actually we did reference it in the middle of Wake Up Call, where Liam was rearranging the set, maybe because he's doing a special pack shot for something. Watch the cables there. Table. Oh, 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 fight's a way to go down. <laughs> fight's going down. Fight's going down. We're going to have our own Royal my, Rumble my, right my, in here. My, my, uh, my, my layout box has disappeared. And then, lo and behold, we spotted Liam in the corner with a... And I'm like, has he got my box? Thank you, Hans. Fist goes later. Yeah. I'm not leaving without it. That, that much is true. I'm not leaving without it. Wrestle them for it. Wrestle them. So he Carver is in saying, I know the craft along is for the glitter paste, but I have some of the printed butterfly acetates that would work great for this box as well. Yes, it would. Absolutely. Go. Good idea. Stephanie Theodore is in saying, I couldn't see Debbie had put down the cardstock on top of her mat until the reveal. Phew. Uh, did you think she was doing the scraping <laughs> of the excess just onto her mat? Um, our Rachel is saying, no judgment, Debbie. Mine is, so it's not Rachel, it's Susie that's saying, no judgment, Debbie. Mine is still up. As long as it's down by my birthday on the 19th, I'm doing well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to jump to a few other that are saying the same, Debbie. Laurie is saying, we'll take everything a butt Christmas tree down this weekend, celebrating one last Christmas with family and friends at the end of January. Bren W747 on YouTube, my tree is still up. Deborah Pleasant is saying, I still have my tree up. Angela is saying, Debbie, it always comes down quicker than it goes up. Quite a few as well saying <laughs> that yours is still up as well, tree and decoration. So I know that Debbie feels a lot better. I do after, now. After uh, you guys saying <laughs> that. A uh, lot of love so far for what Debbie's been doing. Remember, it's all about our glitter paste. This one being our mesmerising glitter paste. So what we'll do is have a little recap of that full collection just later on, but I think we can go straight back to Debbie and crack on with our craft along. Yeah. So we're going to take our pillar candle now. Um, if you haven't got a candle, don't worry. Uh, seriously, you could just any. do the decorator box, it's absolutely fine. Um, I just wanted to show you the different surfaces it could go on during the craft along. And funnily enough, it just made me laugh this because I didn't know Leanne had done this in her, in her launch. Uh, but she decorated a pillar candle, funnily enough, with the same stencil. Um, all I'm going to say, Craig, is great minds think alike. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's what I say. Uh, now, you saw that I wafted earlier, or wafted, however you say that word. Um, I already waft, wafted. <laughs> Parsley coming at me there. Um, I already put some of the repositional glue onto the back, um, only because you don't want the stencil to move. Um, now you could hold it down with some um, tape, some low tap tape. However, I will just tell you that these stencils. Can you what's it mean by the stencils? Can you see the little filigree design? Mm -hmm. Perfect for ink. You need to be a bit more careful when you're using a glitter paste. Um, so for me personally. The glue is the best option. I'm not sure what our stateside friends use, Craig. Um, so is there a particular spray glue that they have stateside? I think there is certain other branded ones. So they can get it from their DIY stores and what have you. Obviously, it's not a crafter's companion one, but I think they can get some repositionable sprays in their hardware stores. Perfect. Now, I, I know right now, again, white on white, very tricky to see, but you can see that I've got the stencil on there. I still grip it either end. Um, you could tape. I, I'd say you could tape, but it can be quite tricky with our low tack tape because of the wax surface. Um, so me personally, I just hold it with both, both my hands, but I'm making sure that all those 
leaf, those veins of the leaves are set and set down and stuck down. Um, so for me, that's the most important part of this bit because if they're not stuck down, and especially with it being on a curvature um, and a bit curvy, um, it could be a bit tricky to get that paste to contact very well with there. There is a little top tip I'll give you if it does go wrong. <laughs> because they can do. Um, in fact, Debbie, you've stuck that down, but you haven't got your glitter paste ready. So I'm just going to pop that down onto there um, and just get your glitter paste. So I'm going to, again, I think I might do an ombre effect again, since I've done that with the, with the um, acetate. So I'm going to get that out. I like that you go. can do that. You can either just go with the one colour or, you know, you can go with yeah, your two colours. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's so many of the beautiful colours. We have this eight colours in total with this, which I think is absolutely fab. Do you know what I'm going to do, Craig? I'm going to, I'm going to go against what I said a minute ago. I'm going to waft it more. OK. I'm going to put some more on. Only because we're talking a different surface now. We're talking a waxy surface. Um, I'm going to give it that 30 second rule. It's the same with any of our sprays. We recommend about 30 to 40 seconds um, to let it go to that tacky stage. And on this occasion, I am going to put more down. You didn't, I didn't do this with the acetate. It doesn't need it because of that residue that will stick to that surface. It's a bit different with a candle. You can get away with it more. Um, I do tend to, as well, just give the candle a little bit of a wipe down. Um, I think I'm good to go. It's been, I've had to talk for a bit longer than 30 seconds, haven't I? I think it'll be fine. Um, and I'm just going to position that back onto the candle. And then again, I'm just going to make sure all of those veins are stuck down. So, craft knife, colour, mm -hmm. exactly the same. We are not going to scrape it on. We are going to spread accordingly. Right. I think I'll pop a little bit more down into this side. So on my original one, I just used one colour on one side, one colour on the other, uh, but I'm mixing it up again. So if it's on like a, a rounded surface, are you doing like little and often? Little, yeah. Um, you could take quite a big chunk onto there. And if I said big chunk, Debbie, you have got a big girl there. My goodness me. Um, but you can do it. Uh, do you know, to be fair though, Craig, um, I often say this with pastes, you get a bit more of a texture when you add more in. Uh, you get more of a bit more 3D, 3D dimension. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, um, there's no right or wrong way. As long as you've got it sealed down, and I say sealed, the candle's stuck down, and I'm going to spread that. I'm trying to get that in shot. Sorry, James. It's because I'm trying to get it close into my vision. I've got various focals on. <laughs> so it, I'm still getting used to them, guys. I know I've had them oh, since yeah. September, but my God, I swear to God, um, I'm really struggling with them. Uh, Far distance ones, absolutely, my, my vision distance is brilliant with them. My close-ups, I'm still struggling with. Um, I think that's it. I think I've got, oh, just a little bit there. Missed a little bit. Let's get that bit just stuck onto there. I'm just going to give it a little bit of an eyeball, Craig. Yeah, just a li little bit more just over there. You can tap it in as well. If you want to tap it in, you can tap that. What I would just say, don't scrape. Don't do the butter to toast, you know, the butter and toast. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, James. <clears throat> Nearly caught more, I mean, I then. Um, same as we did with the other. We're going to whip it off quick. Like so. Ooh. Oh, I like that, the mixture of the colour. That is beautiful. Now, I can see at the very top, I missed that little tiny bit. I'm not going to worry too much about that um, because I can still see some of the paste onto there. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much. And I think that looks exquisite. It does, it really now, does. Now, this is down to you whether you want to tackle the other side while it's still wet. I will tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, the only reason being, I will do, but I will let that side dry first. And the only reason being, and stop flicking this around there because I can feel it flicking in your hair, <laughs> um, is because, did you see where I held the candle? Uh -huh. To get it on the other side, I'm going to have to be really careful. I can't get hold of the candle where I had it before. Right, yeah. Because that's wet. So at this stage, I'm going to leave it just onto this one side. When that's dried off, and I will do it because I... Stickler for detail. Um, I want it on the full length of the candle. 
So I will, when that's dried, go to this side and do the same. Again, this needs scraping off. Don't slap that straight on because if you do, all the little bit that's gone underneath, you will get onto that candle. However, if that didn't work out the first time, do you know what you can do, Craig? What's that? I'm not going to do it because I'm, uh -huh. I'm quite happy with that one, which is less I smudge it. Um, scrape it off with your spatula right, and start okay. again because it will wipe clean until it's dry. Now, this is a waxy surface, so it doesn't dry as quick as it would on a porous mm -hmm, surface. Mm -hmm. So you can get away with it in scraping it off, wiping it down and starting again. So if you don't get the perfect result the first time, please, 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 please don't worry, don't fret. Take your palette knife, scrape it all off, wipe it down, let it dry, start all over again, and you'll be absolutely fine. And I will say this from experience, because you know the first time I put mine on my candle? We're a right mess. It ain't gonna lie. It went absolutely everywhere. <laughs> I hadn't sealed it down. It had seeped through. It looked like brilliant on one side, splodgy on the other, and I didn't want that result. So for me, it's all about giving it that time to get used to that, not scraping, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. smoothing it down, using the Good back advice. end of your, patula, uh, your spatula, um, and it'll make such a difference, I promise you. Uh, but you can take it off. Um, I was hoping, I said to Nicola, I hope it don't go right, so I can show them. Um, but I'm really happy with that, what I've done, so I'm not going to reshow you, because knowing my look, Craig, <laughs> come to use it the second time, and um, I might get that same result. Yeah, so let's not. Uh, let's not... Uh, Let's not test ourselves. However, I will be decorating the other side of the candle. Let me just bring that back into vision. The other side of the candle, once this side has dried, look at the, it's about five, six, seven, eight colours in there. Can you see no, with the light? It just looks absolutely phenomenal. Oh, the way it's capturing honestly, the light. Honestly, absolutely beautiful. I've seen other members that have done like a strip of card on the top and the bottom, purely for decoration. Because yeah. while it's just with the glitter paste, that will work and you can burn that candle if you would give that as a gift. If you're adding anything like acetate or cardstock onto it, remove. Tell them to remove before you start burning the candle because we don't want the naked flame with paper or with acetate. No, definitely That's not. That's just no. a little top tip. Uh, but I like it just like that. Absolutely. So I'm going to clean this one. Um, I would, we're doing okay for time. Might even get that other colour onto there. Um, I'm going to... Make sure all my paste back into there and I'm going to clean my stencil as well, oh. uh, ready for the next stage, which is where we'll start to put some construction together. Um, and then if we get time, we'll decorate the other side, if it's dried, mm -hmm. if it's dried. Yeah. Sounds good to me. That gives Debbie that little bit of an opportunity to get herself reset. Also gives you guys at home time to catch up if you need to, of course, catch up. Now, when it comes to this craft along, if you are doing it live, then of course that is great. Please do, if you can, send in your pictures later on within our master class. So studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk uh, would be good to see. So that's going to be within Masterclass later on. But it is all about the mesmerising glitter paste here. Eight piece collection. Now within the eight pieces, what you are going to get is each of them are going to be 50 mil tubs. Now there you can see the colours. Let's bring in the board that I've got here because this also showcases the colours. And then what we'll do is we'll give you a look at the little swatch swatches that we've done as well later on because what happens as you then start to look at them as you twist them and turn them what will happen and it really will happen when you're looking at them up close at home you get different colors you get different varieties you get a different hit but then also they're a lot chunkier than our original ones you can still go into all your different mediums that you know and love already from our previous glitters but these are brand new colors and these are a lot chunkier as well you're going to get the eight of them for 65 pound or 79 dollars so we'll get them at that launch day price you've got that 10 percent off when it comes to that launch day price but then it comes down further if you are platinum that mean, means you're going to get your 20 percent off it means you're going to get them for 52 pound or 63 dollars 20. for you guys across central europe just you go into your website.eu and then all your prices in euros will be there and will be deducted depending on what level you are at club inspire have a look on shop the day you're going to find all the stencils you're going to find all the tools as well as lots of other crafty mediums for you to use first hour done we're now into our second hour of our Friday edition of our Craft Along. It's the start of the weekend here. Now we've got a cracking weekend coming your way all weekend. However, we are focusing on 
the Friday that we are in. We've had a really fab wake-up call earlier. Now, at the back of that last hour there, I was letting you know that we've got the master class later on, which is all about tools and adhesives that Debbie will go over. But this one is about the craft along. So if you're joining along, craft along live, it's lovely to have your company. If you are going to be doing it at a later date, then it's going to be lovely to see what you're going to be making as and when you do do it. Now, we do have a guest as well. So we're going to dock back and say hi to Lynn Blackledge, which many of us, most of us know as uh, hashtag go live granny. How are you getting on, Lynn? Yes, I'm doing all right. It's a bit sludgy. Okay. But it's the first time I've ever used glitter. Oh, I don't know if you can see it's it's oh, it's blurring. I think you might have a little filter on there. Yes. And I, I think you've got a little oh. filter going on in the background. <laughs> what do I do to get rid of it? There's a question. We're going to feed that to the gallery. So we're just going to send all the questions. They've got a couple of questions here. Instead of me sending them to Debbie, I'm going to send them to James and see if he can answer them as well. <laughs> uh, it might be something to do with uh, your screen. We'll, uh, we'll find out and help. So but right. it's good to see that you've managed to do it on the candle as well. I have, yes. First time I've used it, so um, I'm happy with the result. It's not perfect, but, you know, it shows it can be done quite easily. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Yeah. And now it was your previous glitter or the previous glitters that we've done that you're using, isn't it? Yes, yes. I've got, I've got, um, I've got, I'm using Jade River Spectrum oh, nice. Noir and Regal Purple. Oh, how lovely is that? And that's great to see, Lynn, how as well. Yes, of course, Debbie's using the mesmerising glitter paste, but there's nothing stopping you from using our previous glitter paste as well. You know, if you want to, whether it's the Spectrum Noir, yeah. or Crafter's Companion, Christmas collections there. Uh, well, it's lovely to see that you're getting on really well when it comes to your craft along project with Debbie. What we will do is we'll dock back to you again later on within this craft along. If there is anything uh, that you need to double check or ask with Debbie, just let James and Nicola know and we'll come back to you and we'll help you out. We're can. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, it's always lovely to see Lynn when she's here doing the craft along. I just love her enthusiasm with all things craft and good to see as well. Although we had that little bit of that filter going on, it was lovely to see that, you know, she's able to then follow on when it comes to things such as the candles, which Debbie's been doing as well. Uh, what we're, there is a couple of questions, but what we'll do is I'll do them, I'll feed them across to Debbie after Debbie's then started to go on with the next section of, uh, well, your craft along, Debbie. Absolutely. We're going to put the, we're going to get the construction part of it done. So we've done the acetate, busy drying. We've done the candle, busy drying. So what we'll do now is we'll get the construction of the box, box together, including the lid and the base. Slightly different this time to what I would normally do, um, just because I'm going to do a bit of a wrap around uh, the base and, uh, and then the top going over the top. So I'm going to give you all the instructions. Um, it was just the way my mind worked when I put this together. So let's go in first with a couple of measurements. Now we're going to make the base... Um, for the candle to sit in. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you to get some of your cardstock. So I'm using multi-purpose white cardstock. And we're going to measure this up to six and a half inches by six and a half inches. Um, now, um, I've took this measurement um, only because... I'll, I'll tell you in a minute when I, how I've worked this one out. But let's just cut that down to size to start with. So that's the base part of it. I'm going to come back to the lid in a second, and I've done it slightly differently to how we would normally tell you to do a box lid, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so first things first, um, we're going to score around this at uh, one and a half inches all the way around all four sides. So we're going to bring in our scoreboard, we're going to bring in our scoring tool, and we are going to score at that one and a half inches. Now, at this stage, I would tell you, when you're making a box lid and a box base, it's two pieces of cardstock the same size, um, and then the same measurements in terms of the depth. One on this side, one on the other. We're not doing it this time, um, and there's a reason behind that, which I'll explain as we go along. So we've got one and a half inches all the way around. And... That's the second one. A couple of nice gentle score lines. You just want to break the fibres of the cardstock. You don't want to tear it. So just make sure that you uh, do just a couple of gentle ones all the way around at the one and a half inch mark. This started life as a six and a half inch square piece. Um, and then that one and a half all the way around. And we'll construct this and put this together first. Okay. So I'm going to score and burnish. Little top tip our Debbie told me. 
um, to keep your base nice and straight. She said, fold the small tab, fold the large part over. And you know, ever since I've done it, Craig, oh my God. Really? It's made I've such never a difference, seen that. yeah. Such a difference. So, a little top tip from our Debs Fisher, who will, of course, be here tomorrow. Well, all weekend, actually. She's here all weekend, so that'll she be um, a good one. Um, and I'll show you why. I thought it was a brilliant tip when she told me, and I'm like, ever since she's, she showed me, it makes such a massive difference. Um, I'm going to take away what we call, I call it the bit, it's like a birthday. <laughs> birthday cake pizza slice whatever it is that you want to call it a little nick a little notch we're just going to take it out but it reminds me of a slab of birthday cake i'd be eyeing up that cake all day on that counter we are christina i don't know if anybody bought it in end oh i don't know oh the boss has had it has she i did have my eye on it i should have i should have bags did it first shouldn't i never I? even noticed That's it Debbie. did you not see it no it looked like a toffee toffee Ooh. kind of cake Look lovely. Got walnuts on Cop the top. Looks absolutely beautiful. Oh. Now we're going to construct. I'm going to put this together straight away. Normally I would say to you, "Oh, we're going to decorate all the panels and the inside," but we're not going to on this occasion. We're going to put this all together. Now I will tell you, um, it is construction. We've got a candle in there. It's heavy, so I am using construction weight glue, the driest of our glues, and I am going to use red liner tape, and I'm going to make sure. With an inch of its life, it's got quite a nice bit down, Craig. So, me personally, it's just worth doing these little t uh, touches. Of course, I am using the larger uh, tape here. This is the 12 mil one. Um, you can use any, um, whatever you've got close to hand. Uh, but yeah, I just want to make sure I've got a really strong, strong uh, glue holding that together. And I think this is probably one of the strongest glues we do mm -hmm. um, in terms of a dry. Is that because you've got the weight of the candle The weight of the candle, inside? yes, yeah. Um, if you're only using it for something light and you're not decorating a candle, then you can change your glue up. You can use our tape pens. Our tape pens are equally as strong. However, for me, in terms of a candle, um, I wouldn't use anything else other than red liner tape. And this is the reason why we have different glues for different jobs. And it's true. And it isn't that common, that gimmick that I said, <laughs> that I thought was in the past. Um, <laughs> it's not. So, I'm going to bring in, let me bring in a piece of tissue, because I know it's, oh, fine. I'll just take all that off. There we go. It's lovely to see how, you know, you're using the mesmerising glitter paste when it comes to the acetate, but when it comes to projects, the craft alongs as well. Maybe, you know, if you don't have, of course, your glitter paste or that, you can still do what Debbie's doing with plain acetate, or, you know, your... Uh, foiled acetate or so you're able to adapt the craft alongs you know that meets your needs at home and I think that's always such a great thing about the craft alongs that we do yeah absolutely now flush I'm going to keep that up to that first um, edge of the box um, if you find you've got a little bit of a what I call a lip um, you could always trim off so this top part you could always trim off that down um, but since Deb has, has taught me this way of doing the box together it's made it so much easier um, and so much neater as well it looks really neat when you do this um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna come in and again keep that nice and flush all the way around all four sides there we go and I'm just gonna burnish all that glue around those four sides and it makes such a difference with your box, keep it nice and straight. Instead of, you know, sometimes you can get a bit of a bow in. Mm -hmm. um, by doing that little top tip that our Debs taught, taught me, it's made such a difference. Now, that's going to be the base for the candle. I'm going to be very careful. And that's the reason why I chose that particular measurement. I wanted a three and a half inch base to fit the candle. So what I did was I took a ruler, went across that. That was three inches. So I knew that was three. Um, but what I wanted to do was make sure I had a little bit of space mm -hmm. because my intention is when I gift this, it's going to have some tissue paper right, yeah. um, wrapped up with the cat. The catalan's going to be ripped up with tissue paper and popped into there. Um, but that's the base done. We're now going to cut some, um, we're going to do the lid, but it's, like I said, it's slightly different. And there's a reason because when I'm going to put all my um, box together I'm actually wrapping around the base I'm keeping that on the inside of the box so if I just bring this in just for a second to show you what I mean if I just take this out for a second and I have strengthened my bottom on the inside panels <laughs> children in my ear children in my ear there did Lynn's you hear, laughing. Did Lynn's you hear laughing. laughing yeah <laughs> 
but I've wrapped I've wrapped the box around the base normally I would put that inside and then attach that but I've done it slightly different um, and that's just to give it a little bit more strength and also to give it that neat to finish as well so that's the reasoning behind my measurements that I'm going to be giving you <laughs> Now, I'm going to take a bit more white cardstock. Now, for this bit, to create that lid, and because of that reasoning that I'm wrapping around, I need this to be slightly different. So I can't start with two pieces of cardstock the same way. So I'm going to make this slightly bigger okay. than I would do normally. We're going to do the one and a half inch all the way around. But what I'm going to take it to is... Now, with our scoreboards... Uh, sorry, with our scoreboards, Craig, this is a really um, easy way to achieve. Now, I'm just trying to find my pencil because, again, I had my pencil out early when I was filming. There we go. Um, instead of it being six and a half, I'm going to go to the one eighth of an inch extra. It gives me a little bit more leeway to fit over the top because me, me, me base has got a card around it, so I need this to be extra big. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to mark it down. So basically, it's six and a half inches, but with an extra eighth, and okay. I've just placed a mark on there. You can, of course, score that if you want to make it easier. You could score that, and then all you're going to do is follow the lines of the score when you're cutting it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, that makes so, again, sense. I'm just going to turn that this way, and I'm going to take it to that six and a half, but that extra eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to put that there as a visual, and then we'll score down there. And that's the bit that you're going to cut out. So before we take that any further, I'm going to bring in my guillotine and then I'm going to follow them lines and I'm going to measure it and take that measurement onto the end of the silver blade so if I just lift that up for a second bring that down this is where we need those uh, score lines to sit directly onto the top to get that perfect measurement so I know now that that's bang on that six and a half with that extra eighth of an inch over the top if that makes sense if anyone wants me to repeat that, Craig, I absolutely will. But when you're taking a look into your board, can you see the six and a half? It's literally a fraction over. But to get that six, six of an, the half with the extra eighth of an inch on, it's quite difficult mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do it on a guillotine, which is why I always and will always use my scoring board as a tool Great to help me Great get those tip. precise measurements. I, like I said, Craig, crafting should be easy. We shouldn't be stressing about it. Trying to work that out with a, with a guillotine, a little bit harder. So for me, that, that just makes it that little bit easier to do. Now, the same thing that applied that we did with the base, we're going to now do, but we're not taking it to the base side. We're still going to keep it on the lip side because I've got that extra measurement in, um, but it makes the world of difference for fitting over the lid. So we're going to score at one and a half inches all the way around. So basically, even though we know that this board is a scoring board as well as a box maker, because it's got the box lid and the box base, we're ignoring it today. Okay. That's, that's what we're doing, we're ignoring it. So again, one and a half inches all the way around, and exactly the same that we did. We're going to fold over Miss Fisher's way. I'm going to try it that way now. Oh, Craig, honestly, it has, it's literally made life so much, especially for me boxers, it's just made them... Isn't it funny how just simply folding it the other way That's can what make I a said difference? to her, I Debbie, it don't make any difference. And she were arguing with me. I'm like, Debbie, it don't make any difference. Until I did one. And I would never argue with a fish. You would exactly never argue make, with a fish. Because... Um, slap in the face. She's always... Th she <laughs> It ma she makes sense though, doesn't she? She makes a lot of sense. She and she's always she does, full to of top fair. tips. I love how her brain works. She's, she's very clever in she, a way. Of course, yeah. Very clever. Yeah. Me, I just... I, I can't think of these things, Craig. I don't know about you, but I never think of these things. I just I might... sail through life without thinking about it. <laughs> True. I'm the same. Sail away. Sail away, sail I, you know, away, I knew you were going to come up with you when I said that. <laughs> I just had a feeling that was what you were going to do. Another little top tip that Leanne gave us was, do you know where you've, when you've already done the scoring, she always says, make sure that they are reinforced as well. Um, she's because it makes a difference when you're putting your box lid together. See, so, she's yeah. someone that never speaks sense. <laughs> Say that in front of her. 
you're right. <laughs> It'd be a whole different story if she was here in front of me. <laughs> yeah. This is the oh, fountain of all knowledge. Tune in on Monday. Jam. Debbie's going to be here with the lodge and the layout collection with Ben because Craig's been given the heave <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> asked her to stay on an extra day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. That's You've hilarious. got no chance, Nicola. I would never even attempt to even jokingly say that to Leanne. You know Nicola will do it. I know Nicola would do it. Nicola would go to Leanne and go, oh, hey, Leanne, uh, Craig was saying things about you on air the other day. <laughs> I'm going to message her later and say, whatever you hear, whatever you've been told, there is no proof. Don't, don't, wa don't watch Craftalo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even dare send her the link, Nicola. You really are trying to land me on it with her, aren't you? <laughs> You'll be having another meeting, Craig. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when you got like when you get called into Leanne's office, it's like the schoolmistress's office, isn't it? You start it's like your bomb. knees start knocking. <laughs> like that with Jenny's office as well. If you get like, asked to go into Jenny's office. <laughs> yeah, a moment. Can you come through and see? Me? Oh, I get squeaky bum. <laughs> I always reply saying, is it good or is it bad? And if it's good, it comes back, oh, yeah, it's fine, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> if you get no reply, you've got real squeaky bum there. <laughs> oh, dear. Thankfully, I've not been called in for a squeaky bum moment for quite a long time. <laughs> until, until today. today, today might be until a today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Craig, you cracked me up. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> you all know what I mean by that expression, no? You all know what I mean. <laughs> oh dear. That's hilarious. Right, <laughs> that is my lid. Now, before I get confused with my base and my lid, I'm actually going to just write it on there because um, although it's slightly bigger, I'm just putting an L in. I'm going to keep my base as it is, but um, you'll, you can actually see the difference a little bit there because we've made it from a bigger cardstock. Um, so that's the two with the base and the lid. And then we need to do the sides. So we've got two acetate sides, so we need two plain cardstock sides. If you want to make it all acetate, you absolutely can. The only reason I didn't on this occasion is because when we make an acetate box, putting it together, red lining tape's okay, but you can still see some, so I would want to cover up those corners. So I thought, make life easy for yourself, Debbie. Do a couple with acetate, do a couple with um, plain white okay. cardstock. For me, that just made the most easier sense. Now, we did the measurements at the beginning where I told you with the A5, uh, A5 cardstock that we didn't chop anything off. So in terms of this one, we can get ours out of the two now. So if I just measure that up, you can see it's eight and a quarter inches. So we're going to turn it this way and we're going to take the four and the four out of one cardstock. So it's just going to be chopping into four, two pieces. So we're not having to do any measurements lengthwise because we've kept it nice and simple. Um, and for me, that makes a massive difference again. I'm not, I didn't want to overcomplicate things. Um, so I'm just going to take that to the four inch mark. And again, another one at the four inch mark. And then we're going to put those two um, half inches in again, like we did with the acetate. It's exactly the same um, in terms of that box measurement. So I did say it were a bit higgledy piggledy. Um, and if you're watching this and then do the craft along later, you could do all this in one go. Yeah, you could. <laughs> but, it, but to be fair to be, it makes sense the way that you've done it. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. It was just because uh, we needed that extra little bit of time, you know, that extra little bit of time to get the drying stage done. So again, it's the four inch, we're scoring at three and a half. You can go to this side, but I find myself struggling a little bit with it being such a tight, you know, the half inch mark is the, f well, I said the first mark, it's an eighth of an inch, if you want to be really fussy. But uh, just make life easy for yourself. There's no point getting, you know, things in a twist. <laughs> Undergarments in a twist. You want to be relaxed. You yeah. want to enjoy it. You don't want to stress exactly. about it. Exactly. stressful enough at times. Exactly. Um, so this is the exception to the rule that I'm doing with Debs's. I'm actually just bringing that in and scoring that. 
and make sure it's nice and burnished. So again, what we've got is a three and a half inch panel by that eight and a quarter, um, and the same this side as well. So I'm gonna come in and just score down there. So basically, what we've got is, and I'm just gonna bring my acetate back in for a second, because this is how I'm doing mine. I'm alternating them. So we're gonna attach each one, so I'm gonna do it that way, because each one that's got a lip needs this straight edge. Wait a minute, Debbie, get that the right way around. The lip to the straight edge, that's it. Um, and the same with this one. That would go there, and then that would go there, and then it will all attach. Um, so that's how I'm putting mine together. Okay. Possibly going to be able to do this, Craig. However, we'll cut the mats and layers for these. Now, I'm just moving those to one side. Because the mats and the layers that we're going to do now, this is your chosen colour cardstock. So for me personally, I'm choosing the Botanic Garden Pad. And I'm going for... Oh, do you know, I can't tell you how much I love this pad, Craig. We've got... Um, so Lynn's uh, popped her, her uh, hand up. She's got a question that she's wanting to ask. Absolutely, Lynn, ask how, away. How can we help you? Measurement down the side there. I'll throw that to Debbie. What was that, sorry, Lynn? What was the measurement, that the scoring line down there? Half an inch. So it, it, either half an inch or you can take it to the three and a half inch and do it at three and a half inch. Either way, depends what for you right. feel comfortable when you're scoring. It's just an half okay. inch border just on the one okay. side. Yeah. Thank Perfect. you. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. Loving your outfit. Can I just say I'm yes. loving a scarf. Is it a really? scarf? I, I, I can't it's... work out if it's yeah. a scarf. Is our lint It's beautiful? Community made this for me. Oh, Lynn, it's beautiful. Can I just tell you, yeah. it's absolutely gorgeous. The colours, yes. I'm drawn to the colours, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I've seen those I, colours and I'm thinking, beautiful. It's very popular, um, but um, I didn't have it on to start with because I've been rushing around getting ready in such a short time. I got so hot, but then I got cold, so I've put this on now. Oh, bless <laughs> you. I don't blame you in the slightest. You get yourself <laughs> nice and warm. Now, we're yeah. ready to go with our um, mats and layers. So first things first, we know that this measures in at eight and a quarter by three and a half. So it's a nice, simple step. We are going to take half, a quarter of an inch off, sorry, not an half an inch, a quarter of an inch off. Um, so we know we're going to come down to three and a quarter by um, eight. So that's the measurements that we're going to go to with our mats and layers. And we're going to cut this four times. So if I just bring this in, I've got uh, my uh, guillotine again. We're going to take it to the three and a quarter inch. Well, just make sure I've got that right, Debbie. No, wait, stop. Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Ooh, nearly. Thank goodness I didn't put that down. I forgot my little half inch. This is three oh, and a half yeah. inch. So it's three and a quarter for you. Could we just erase that little bit out there? Would anybody notice? We'll take it out in the edit, Debbie. Well, should we take Don't that worry. in the edit? Yeah, and we'll re we'll re and do you know it what? Again. If I just read my blinking instructions, <laughs> I'd be fine because it tells me on there. Me going rogue. Three and a quarter inches by eight. That is a beautiful cardstock. I know you just said it there yourself, you know how much you love it, but it really is, isn't it? Both of them. Oh, it's the gl the honestly, it's glorious. I don't know why I'm thinking I'm going to get eight out of seven and a quarter there. I need to extend my leg. Could you imagine me extending my leg? <laughs> so this is three and a quarter inch. By, um, eight. did I say eight? I'm going to do my measurements again. By eight. I've been put off by your leg, Craig. Get me leg like mm -hmm. down. <laughs> that wasn't my leg, Debbie. Well... <laughs> okay, that's, that was maybe just a bit. <laughs> hey, Dick, what was that knock on the door you were expecting on that email, Craig? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So three and a quarter by eight. <laughs> I didn't know when get a shot of it. That's what I want to know. Um, and we're going to do this four times, and just so, so you what? can see, so they've got the measurement perfect. That's the perfect mat and layer. So three and a quarter by eight inches, and we want that four times because we're going to double layer this. Again, we're holding a strong candle in there, so we want to make sure we get um, a really strong, uh, strong, strong side panels and, of course, the base of the lid and the bottom of the base. 
that makes sense. Every time you, I don't, I don't know if it's the tone of your voice or what it is, Debbie, but when you say candle, I just think of Elton John's candle in the wind. I know it's a beautiful song. Oh, it's a gorgeous song. I'm not trying song. to say that in like a, a, a flippant or cheeky way. I just, I, I just think of that song. I think it's just the way you say it. The way my raspy voice yeah, is sounding. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Oh uh, dear, I wonder what I'm going to do when I sound normal again. That's what I'm just thinking. I'm going to miss this voice. <laughs> we'll Mr. Miss Love it. will miss the voice. When I go to Hobby Maker, he keeps saying to me, talk to me, Debbie. Who's that? <laughs> but Mr. Love, Andy Love, <laughs> he likes the new voice. He says, can I keep it? I'm like, really? I mean, no. I want to get my old voice back because I want to sing again. I'm missing singing. Um, so, yes. Now, I did say that we know we've got our lid and our base box here and we do know that this is a three and a half inch square. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut ourselves. Um, get this right, Debbie. Look at your instructions. Um, three and a quarter inch in the plane and a three inch square for the pattern. So I'm going to get those uh, plain parts done first. So the plain part is um, three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And you want two of those. Like so. So that one will be my base. Now that's going to go on the inside. So that's going to be the inside panel. And this one's the lid. Now I know it's a tiny bit bigger, but it doesn't matter. I didn't want to overcomplicate things. So it's just a little bit more of a bigger frame on the outside. Um, and then the pattern cardstock, we're going to do exactly the same. Um, in terms of cutting it, we're just taking it down that quarter of an inch. Um, so what I'm going to do is have um, a three inch square times twice. I'll come to the panels in a second. So I'm just going to bring these in. And if anybody gets uh, a little bit confused here, um, I will just repeat these measurements again. OK, brilliant. So three and a quarter inch square. Three and a quarter, three and a quarter for that lid. Three by three for the pattern. And that's the same for both of them. So that's the inside and that's the top of the lid. So that's your panels done there. We'll do the sticking down in a, se in a second. So pop those down. Um, and then we've got our panels here. So we've got the four panels that sit onto the two pieces of cardstock that we've got. And they're going to go on both sides, on the outside and the inner part. But however, we need pattern cardstock for this. So we know that that's measured in at eight inches by three and that quarter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take it down to um, three by um, seven and three quarters. So if I just bring in my pattern pit, I wonder if I could get that out of there. Ooh, let's have a little look. Yes, she can, Debbie. Get more out of my cardstock. Um, so we know that the pat plain one was three at uh, three and a quarter. So we're going to go to three by seven and three quarters. Now I chose to use the not so decorative side on the panels of the boxes. Um, it's a beautiful pattern, but don't forget we've got our laurel leaves and I thought it might be a bit busy. Yeah, so I guess personally, see where you're coming from. I did the B side for this one. Your craft along, your choice. Um, but I'm going to repeat that again so that you can see we're going to have four of these as well. So it's a three inches by seven and three quarters and it's going to be the B side, like so. And then two more of those. So we will, you will be using a couple of sheets from each one because we've still got some panels to do as well um, on the in, uh, around the outside of the box, and I'll show you that in a second. But for now, it's three by seven and three quarters, and we're going to reverse, the, use the B side. And then just need one more, and I think I'm going to have to break out. Let's have a little look. Ooh. No, we're not. Oh, we're going to no. get that out of the one. We're not going to waste. And I'll probably put that on the inside, to be fair. Um, so I'll come back to the rest of it. But what we'll do now is we'll do a little bit of sticking. OK. Um, so I'm going to stick all of these panels together. Debbie, see when it comes to the, ac the acetate, the stencils? Yes. Can you use either side? Yes. Lynn's, Lynn Morton's asking yeah, that. Yeah, you can do a mirror image with the Fab. stencils. So yes, Lynn, absolutely. There's no right or wrong way to the stencil side. Personally, um, I've, not, I've, I've not seen it. No. If there is, um, 
I personally as, don't yeah. see it. So as far as, as I'm I aware, have both sides. I'm the same as well. And again, it's just while you're, just you're sticking there, Cathy Myers is asking, uh, can you die cut with both acetates? I'm presuming she means heavyweight and our heat-proof acetate. Die cut with both, yes. Yeah. The heat, the heat wave acetate is thinner, mm -hmm. but you can die cut with it. Um, I personally tend to use heavyweight, and this is my own personal choice. I use it for construction. So, I don't die cut yeah. into it. Um, I use it as a construction weight uh, for things like box panels and all those kind of things as well. Uh, right, I'm just sticking away now. I've lost one of my panels. Don't even ask me how I've managed to do it. How on earth do you lose a panel, Debbie? I bet it's on floor. Just you saw me cut four. Oh, it's there. It's there. I'm just thinking, where's it gone? I cut four and now I did. Uh, it happens to me all the time. There was something I lost the other day when I was crafting in my craft room. And Debbie, I swear it was at the side of me the whole time. Yeah. No, it wasn't acetate, Nicola. It was something quite substantial. It was like one of my tools or scissors. It wasn't something like that. It was, you know, something that you could clearly see at the site. And I hunted high and low. And it was there the whole time. I swear it wasn't there the whole time, but it was. It had to be. It does it all the time. Greg, I, I swear, it's laughing at me. Ha, 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 ha. Laughing away that it hides in all those nooks and crannies. We've got another question, I think. Absolutely fine. We've got a question. Me. No, no, we're okay. We're oh, okay. okay. Well, what I will do is the last question I'll substitute then, also from Cathy Myers, is saying, she's saying, Craig, but I'll uh, fire it across to Debbie. Can I ask which acetate, heat resistant acetate or regular construction acetate, has the back in? Oh, very good question. So, the majority of our acetates, with the exception, of heat wave, uh, heat wave. Heat wave. <laughs> I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. Heat resistant, it's the only one that doesn't have a backing. Fab. The majority of our acetates all come with a film backing. So our patterned ones, our foiled ones, our heavyweights, um, they all have a backing, except the, the heat resistant. That's the only one that doesn't have it on. Great question, whoever asked that. Great. That great was question. also from Cathy Myers, who asked about being able to cut into both acetates. Yeah, absolutely. And the heat resistant one is perfect for when you're doing your um, heat embossing techniques on top because it doesn't warp. That's true. Yeah. yeah it the, um, it's funny enough, the only other time that I'll use heat proof acetate out with heat embossing is maybe like for shakers. Yeah. You know, if I'm not wanting to use my heavy weight, yeah. then, because as Debbie said, it's not, I, it's not good for construction because it's a lot thinner, but it's good as a little backing for the fronts of your shakers. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm just sticking all of my panels. As you'll notice, I'm just popping all those that I've cut down. Um, we've just got a few more little bits of mats and lace to do, but I think what we could do, and I will just explain it so that you can be doing this, because I think we're going to take a little bit of a break mm -hmm. uh, so people can catch up. But I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do so that you can see now my plan of action. Now, we're going to stick all of these together. Now, this will be up to you. You can have two white pieces together if you want. I don't. I personally want... Um, Teppy, I've just realised I need to stick my straight down there underneath. What are you doing, girl? Uh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, because it's not set, set yet, uh, I'm going to just stick it underneath. But I need to put some red liner tape on. Okay. So by that, I'm just going to take that off for a ah, second. See, ah, see, that is yeah. a good thing with the Yeah, I've just, I just realised my own little mistake there. Getting carried away with myself, Greg. Um, but it doesn't matter. And thankfully, I used all-purpose glue. So I can get away with this. Whew quite comfortably um, but I need to make sure that the uh, strip of red liner tape if I just make sure I get this the right way around let's turn that that way around so you can see what I'm doing red liner tape onto your half inch one because it's going to tuck underneath and then put your inside panel on so right. Lynn I do apologize if you're already ahead at that stage um, just so no she's not oh thank god for that because I do it sometimes. I get carried away with myself and I forget what I'm doing. We all do it, don't oh, we, when it definitely. comes to the craft alone. When I'm in that craft, crafting like, way, um, I completely forget this little stage. It just makes the difference when it comes to um, sticking down. I'll tell you why I didn't write that down, because I added the inside panels after I'd done this. Uh, so, what we need to do now is attach the um, panels together. So, where you've got the tab, you want the next tab joining up to the straight piece. Now, with acetate, it's slightly difficult to see, so make it easy for yourself in terms of popping that down. I'm just going to make sure I've got that right there. Perfect. So, ooh, careful, because it's not fully dry. Um, just make sure... Oh, sorry. Sorry, James. Just make sure 
that it's flush along there. I have just stuck my finger in a bit because it isn't fully oh, dry. No. And this is the, honestly, this is the reason why we say we craft alongs. Things like this, it's a little tad trickier to do because you need to let that dry. So Lynn, at this stage, if yours are still wet, leave it, construct it together afterwards. I'm just putting it together to show you because it's the craft along. It's very, very difficult to do this stage when it's still wet. And bearing in mind, we said it's touch dry after about half an hour, 45 minutes, but it isn't fully dry. So you will get, like Debbie has, little blobs where I've just got my finger in there. Um, but you get to see what I'm doing with this. So I'm just going to put that panel back in. So I'm just going to add the glue just back onto there. Thankfully, that then covers up the gubbins, shall we say, the, the little acetate panel. Um, so thankfully, I hadn't done that. However, I did do with the other one, so I need to get that off quick. So whilst we're having that break, all I want you to do then is repeat that stage. So we're going to come back in with the... And this is the bit where we're going to have that strip showing. And I'm going to tuck it on the outside because I'm going to make a feature of that one. We're going to put a little strip down there. So this time, I'm going to put the red liner tape on the inside and it's going to sit on the top. If you want to put the acetate up, it's absolutely entirely up to you, but I'm going to just pop it on the outside for this particular stage. Uh, and that's all you need to do. So I'm hoping that made perfect sense. And all you need mm -hmm. to do is put those four sides together. Just be careful if your um, paste is still wet uh, to make sure that um, you don't do a Debbie and get glitter paste stuck. <laughs> I know, that's all only thing your fingers. when it's there. Uh... Craft along with a new item that is something that is wet, of course. You know, we want to show you that full craft along in real time. You know, obviously at home you can take into account the drying time. But Debbie's using the mesmerising glitter paste. This is your eight-piece collection. Grab hold of it. It is there on Shop the Day. You're going to get all eight of them, £65 or $79. dollars you have got that saving of 10%. But if you're platinum, you're going to get that for £52 or $63.20. It's all there, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu. I just figured out the other day, not figured out, I was just told the other day, gone with the days where you have to type www. You don't need to do that now. You can just go straight in with crafterscompanion.co.uk. I thought you still had to do www. when so it comes to website. Like. No, yeah, you learn something new every day. Do away day. with that now. It's just, uh, you can still do it. But yeah, I just thought we'd let you know that. Uh, that's where you need to go <laughs> when it comes to shop the day. What we will do is we'll give you uh, a couple of moments for you to either catch up or check out your baskets. And myself and Debbie will be back just in a couple of minutes. We get to know people from places and walks of life that we wouldn't come across in our everyday life if it wasn't for um, Crafters TV and doing what we do. I got so many lovely comments from people when I started doing the presenting and it was just really such a lovely um, feeling and it's nice that people keep messaging in, you know, we see the same, same people and we know you can build up that kind of relationship with those people so it's just the fact that people like what we do and they're pleased and I do love it when people send us photographs of the items they've made. We talk about customers but really the go in as a customer, come out as a friend. The support that I get is amazing. The messages I get are amazing. Me, personally, it is personal interaction. I've never had the best of health. I've always been open about that uh, with our viewers at Crafters TV. So many people are in the same situation as me health-wise. Other people have got a completely different health issues. They understand and they relate to what I'm going through, what others are going through. So whether we interact on a crafting basis or whether we interact on a health basis, a personal basis, we're all there to support one another. It is incredible. The reaction of viewers when they come to meet us is worth all of the, the early mornings when we have to get up for our early morning shows. Some of the customers come on as craft ambassadors and things like that, craft along with us and being able to actually chat with them on air. I love it, I really love that connection with them. We've had lots of uh, shows where we've done like um, craft alongs especially, where we've had viewers craft along with us. We had a particular viewer, Joy, who joined us once before and she literally made me cry on air and Jo uh, because the things she said about us it really was quite humbling that there are people out there that watch us and and invite us into their living rooms and really treat us like family Hi everyone, 
everyone, I'm Lily. I've been part of Crafters Companion for about a year now. Can't believe it's been that long. It's absolutely flown by. How did my crafting journey start? Well, I have to say I've always been creative. I've always, I've always loved drawing, painting, making cards. I sort of started that when I was very, very young, making all my handmade uh, Christmas cards, birthday cards, thank you cards. And from then on in, it pretty much just stuck. So where am I from? So I currently live about two miles actually from head office here uh, in County Durham um, but I'm actually from Sheffield something that's really sort of close to my heart from where I'm from is the fact that we've got the Peak District just on our doorstep. Crafty Inspirations that's a that's an interesting one I have to say I'm inspired by so many different things I'm inspired just by the team we have here at Crafters Companion the craft experts are so so inspiring I learned so much um, from watching them from sharing our ideas together and I've actually watched the team on telly for so so many years even before I before I first come here and I remember the first time sort of stepped through the doors and um, here at the CTV studios I was completely completely starstruck and as well our community that we have our crafters companion family that wider family that we interact online uh, you guys emailing into the shows leaving all the comments leaving pictures of your creations I find so inspiring as well it's a community where we all feed off of each other a lovely big welcoming community so I'm inspired by all you guys at home as well which I think is absolutely lovely what do I do apart from crafting well I absolutely love running I love being out in the open spaces come rain or shine or snow or hail or whatever the weather throws us. So what does make Crafters TV so special? Well, I'm going to have to go with a very corny, very cheesy answer, but it is true. It's the you guys at home. It's the viewers. If it wasn't for you guys watching your amazing interaction, all your comments, your feedback, your mates that you send through, Crafters TV would not be the same. We wouldn't be here without you guys at the end of the day. Oh, big crafting fails or accidents on screen. Mm, that's an interesting one. I don't think I've had anything too disastrous. I'll be back on next week and I'll have a crafting disaster you watch now. to see Lily's VT. We don't tend to see, see hers pop up. I know she's bar, I know she's in next weekend. Yes, because Lily's in on the Saturday, I'm in on the Sunday. Um, so she's not in this weekend. No, you've got, that's uh, what I said, Nicola, next weekend. Next week, that's what I mean by next weekend. This weekend is this weekend coming, Nicola. Next weekend means like the weekend after the next one. So Lily's on on the Saturday, Nicola. I'm on on the Sunday. Next weekend, the next one. Not this one, Nicola. When it comes to this one here, I bet, I bet you those at home are entertained because they like to hear us bicker. This weekend, it is Debbie Fisher and it's also Becky. They're on this weekend, Nicola. I'm next weekend. Oh, you're not on, Nicola, next weekend. OK. You'll be on the following weekend, though, are you? Because I'm on all that weekend. OK, Nicola's <laughs> going to leave. Um, right, let's go straight back to Debbie. What we'll do is we're just reading that question out because I see Debbie's got her guillotine out there. Lynn is saying, Lynn Morton is saying, I can't get my brain around why the ruler ends on the guillotine, yet the blade is way past it. Uh, how can you work out the measurements? I've got put, I've completely lost it. Do you mean as in like the measurements in terms of... Well, I think just that, me inch. that metal... Yeah, because that that, that, that is inch to the edge of the metal root that can you see there from there to there I'm putting my fingers because I'm careful that is a blade um, That's your inch mark can you see so if I was to take me I've got my metal roller here So is Lynn just getting confused with I think it's just that metal guy so as you said there it finishes uh, Well, can you see yes, so if I put go. my metal ruler into there I put I'm up to the inch line and it's a full inch. Yeah. So if you were looking at the, in terms of a, a quarter of an inch, this is how I was talking to you about this, Craig. Yeah. Um, I called this blade about um, three quarters of an inch up to that silver mark. And then the half, if I just bring this out for a second to show you, um, is about halfway through that metal blade. Does that make sense? It does to me, yeah. So when you are, and do you know what you could do? You could get a Sharpie, because this, you can remove this. I personally don't, but you can tuck it out and remove it and then get that back in. Um, but I would, if you want to make your little life a bit easy for you, just get your little Sharpie pen or a permanent marker and just go on to that three quarters of an inch mark and the half inch mark and put two little markings in there so you know where your half inch is and your three quarter of an inch is. 
Um, it's a good question, though. It, it is, is a good yeah. question. But physically, we can't do it because of the blade. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a blade manufacturer. And to do the measurements and the etchings in there, I think the price would shoot right up. I think so, yeah. yeah so really. that's, that's the whole new per personal thing. Now, I am conscious for the last 15 minutes, we're not going to get the other side of the candle decorated. Don't worry. But what we do need to do is, and you should, you should end up looking like this now with your panel, um, because we're going to wrap this around the box base. However... We need, so if I just bring this in for a second, that is going to wrap around and fit around the box base. But it looks a bit silly here and a bit silly here. So we're going to do those measurements. And then, of course, I've got my box lid. Looks a bit bare, so we need the panels for that. So I'm going to give you the measurements for those. So with that in mind, we are going to... Now, if I remember about your lid, it, we know it's three and a half inches by an inch and a half. So it makes it straightforward in terms of the mats and the layers. So an inch and a half, we come down a quarter, we are going to an inch and a quarter. So inch and a quarter by three and a quarter. And if I just show you now, that fits onto there beautifully. Um, so we want four of those, I say for the top lid. So we know it's already at one and a quarter, so I'm gonna to go to three and a quarter. I'm gonna keep doing that till I've got four of them. And I'll just put those there so you can visually see them. And then I'm going to just take another piece of this cardstock. I'm going to come in and measure another quarter, one and a quarter. And do the last panel there at the three and a quarter. So it's three and a quarter by one and a quarter times four. The pattern paper, of course, we're going to take down again, yet another quarter of an inch off. So we know that's three and a quarter by one and a one and a quarter, so it's going to one by three. Simple. Uh, nice, easy one, this one. I wonder. Yes. Nice. Make the most of your cards, Dr. Debbie. Make the most. Satisfying when that happens, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is the beautiful thing about our guillotine as well, because it is a blade. You get beautiful, crisp cuts every single time. So four of those, and that's for the lid of your box, okay? So we'll glue those in a second. However, I want two extras, because look, it's perfect fit over the bottom. Now, I did four on mine, because I just wanted, and if I just show you for a second, I did it four times, because I wrapped it around all four sides, just to break this pattern up and put a little bit of pattern on. It's entirely up to you, that. Because time is of the essence, um, I'm only going to do two. Um, so we know, again, those measurements. And we know that already is measured at three. So we're going to take that to the one. Because I want two extras. If you're doing the four, just repeat that process again. So we know we're at one and a quarter inch for the mat or the plane by three and a quarter. And we want two of those. And then got one for that so I just need one more and I'm trying to use all my scraps up here at this stage Craig rather than going into any more uh, cardstock so let's have a little look see if I can get three yep bye oh yes make the most of that cardstock Debbie I wonder I wonder. love it I wonder Craig three Oh, yes. Is it going to work? Let's get the four cut. Let's do another four. Why not? Let's do it. I've, I think... I think? What's think, Debbie? Think. Let's go in. Oh, come on, girl. Come on, you're nearly there. Yeah. Let's go in. I know that's three. Oh, yes. So satisfying that you can use the whole parts of your scraps up without having to chop into app anymore, Craig. It's a, a lovely feeling, it lovely, is. Lovely, lovely feeling. Um, just to say as well, what I would say is, later on, probably, if not tonight, tomorrow, keep an eye out on social, because Debbie doesn't know this, because Debbie was in the old part of the building doing some filming in between shows. I was indeed, yes. So she doesn't know that... I was having a little bit of fun, and it's a big day tomorrow here in the UK. Have we've I got, missed your fun videos we've again? We've got the return of an epic TV show, Gladiators. Oh. It is back. <laughs> so I may have, with the help of the team, may have filmed me kind of doing my own intro to Gladiators, <laughs> where I was kind of uh, replicating 
what uh, the gladiators would do in their intro. So we've done that, and I so just need to So I'm going to be it. totally honest with you. I probably wouldn't have got that because I've never watched Gladiators. Don't shoot me, don't shoot me, promise, promise you won't shoot me down. Um, oh my I never God, don't watched say it, that, Craig. I do apologise. I'm so sorry. It wasn't my thing. I, it genuinely wasn't my thing. However, I do love um, so the Ninja Warrior thingy. So I quite enjoyed that. So I think I might quite like the Gladiators. You like Gladiators. So See, I think I might possibly tune in tomorrow. What, what you just said there, so as big of a fan as I am with the wrestling now, that's what it was like with the Gladiators back in the 90s. So even though you're saying you never watched it, that doesn't offend me. What offends me is the fact that Nicholas just come back and said I wasn't even born what? when Gladiators was first round. That really? really does make me feel old. Wait a minute. Nicola, what year were you born? Oh, God, I feel ill. No, you're... No, you're oh, God, I've... You probably... You probably... Nicola was born 95, so you may have just been born just as it was ending. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I got uh, one and a half child by then. Yeah, cos one were in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> just in case you're wondering, what's she about one and a half? Yeah. Uh, one born, one cooking. Um, so, oh, that makes me feel ancient. Should have watched the Gladiators. That would have got the uh, contractions going. <laughs> oh dear lord! Oh so, my god! Uh, yes, we're just having a little bit of fun. Oh, I, I want to well, see that now. Am I? What was that, James? What did you just say? Eight minutes. Oh dear lord! Me? Oh, well, I'm going to get this crack along finish, yeah. <laughs> God, I'm going to get finished. <laughs> oh, seriously, I always run out of time. Um, I tell you what, I'll do a bit of speed sticking. So all I'm going to do is mats and layers on my boxes, my box lids, so that's all four sides. Um, and then what we'll do is... Oh, wait a minute, Debbie, that is your... Yeah, that's your box lid. So I'm just going to put those down. I'll let those dry in a minute. Um, I'll just describe what I've done with the last bits because I know we're not going to have the time. However... I can talk you through that, no problem whatsoever. Um, so they're going round on my lid. And then the others, now I'm not going to stick these down just yet, because I'm going to let that dry for a second. I'm going to bring in this part, because what you need to do now is, because we're wrapping it around, I'm going to put my red liner tape onto here. Now, I would put at this stage, a, and I am going to speak, I said, speed it up. I'm just going to wrap it all the way around, Craig. I wouldn't normally do this. I would normally measure it, but because James has just whispered in our ears... Oh, good grief. Where did Some guy, he's got go? no consideration for us on a live know, show, does I he? I know, I know. Throws I just these times out. Seriously, we need... You know, I need, I need longer than two hours. I think Debbie needs longer. Our Jan got one done in an hour yesterday. If anybody on gave if want, me an hour craft along, I'd have, have a meltdown, Craig. You did? If, I'd have a meltdown if they told me I got an hour. Oh, an hour with Jans, yeah. Uh, I would, I would cry. An hour craft along. Uh, 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 uh. No, 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 no. Lily, if you're watching, no. Please don't put me on an hour craft along, because you'll see a grown woman in her mid fifties crying, because uh, that's no. I can barely get it doing two hours, let alone an hour. Jans a blinking wonder woman. Now she then. is that. We are going to take this tape off. Like I said, I'm rushing now and I feel like I'm doing it a bit of an injustice. However, just keep whispering in me, James. Time-wise, please. Nothing else. <laughs> just so you're aware. Yeah, James. <laughs> now, again, I'm going to have to take care with this because it's still wet in places and I don't want to smudge it. So I'm going to start with um, this panel. Now, do you know when I said about putting the panel in all the way down? That's when you should stick your panels in last. But we're not going to worry about it at this late stage. Um, I'm just going to stick that down first, flush along the bottom, so that when I come around these corners... How long? Good grief, James. I'm not your friend. <laughs> I'm not. It's well, it's all right, because Nicola's not mine, I'm so, hey, yeah, that's fine. Them. I'm going to fall out with them. And then that will wrap and tuck around. So what I need to do is lift off this tape and then stick that around, and then we'll put the panels on, then we'll put the lid on and... Phew, how the heck we got the box put together is beyond me. I'll just quickly describe the last, because I am conscious we need to get to our lovely Lynn 
I'll go live, Granny. Um, so do you want to be doing that while I'm just uh, sticking this do down, that. Yeah, we could say goodbye to Len, see how she's getting on. See, she's just going to come on just in a second. Here she is. How are you getting on there, feet. Lynn? But I'm not going to put it together no. until the, the acetate's dry. Yeah, yeah, I understand right. that. Yeah, that makes so sense. I'll put a picture up later. I love it in the, uh, the Neon Dreams, the pads, obviously the panels that you've done for that one. That's going to work really, really well as well in conjunction it's with the gorgeous. glitter. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And I use the... Colours there. the I used the paste that, that toned in with that. Mm -hmm. And it works. Whatever paste that you use, whichever glitter ones, Can works see? really well. Good choice, uh, then. Uh, yeah. My favourite colours. Yeah, well, actually, I would agree with you on that one as well. You know what I'm like. I love yeah. the teals, the mints, the duck egg blues. Um, have you enjoyed this craft along, Lynn? I have, yes. It was a bit mad before I started <laughs> because I literally got home at 2 o'clock yeah. and had to get everything together because it was a last-minute request for me to do it. But I've loved it. <laughs> oh, we can bless, yeah. always rely on you. And it's lovely to see just her take as well, Debbie, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. I love This is what I love about craft alongs. We give you the idea, but it's lovely to see the finished, you know, the finished, what other people uh, take on it. And, I, you know, we see it a lot with all our craft alongs. We always see somebody else's version. Yeah. And it is absolutely absolutely fabulous now because time is running out i'm just going to put my last two pieces on and i'm just going to how many minutes was that george, george? who's george it's george <laughs> james what, what we'll do that just while you're doing that shall we say goodbye to lynn yes and yeah. um thank you for joining us lynn despite the rush um, nature what debbie what debbie just said about people's craft craft take I did a craft along this morning in a warm hub, which I do every Friday. Mm -hmm. But again, mm -hmm. I put the stuff down and it's wonderful to see their take on yeah. what I've done. So I agree with you totally on that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I totally Absolutely. agree. Now, Lynn. there you go. I loved having you as a guest again, Lynn. It's been lovely. I can't wait to see you finish, finish points, put it all together and, and share it uh, on the okay. socials. But you should end up with a box. Oh. Your lovely gift box like I've got with mine here. Um, I'm quite liking the ombre effect, actually. I think this is really nice. Well, the only yeah. finishing touch yeah. I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little stripper down here. Strip, not strip. <laughs> it was going so well, Craig. It was, it was going, going so well. well. Um, and just take the measurement from there right up to the top of the box because I think it looks nice when you do it uh, to the very top. Um, it is literally uh, just a little slither uh, that you can get that measurement. So if I just bring in uh, my finished one, because I'm going to let that dry, I'll just quickly explain what I did. With the tag punch, this measures at four inches by two, and I've just used our curved... Um, punch to curve that okay. and then I inked through with crushed velvet and grasshopper with the stencil nice. not with glitter paste okay. and added my little tag on and then I just put a little decorative bow onto the top there um, so I used one of my own uh, little crafty stash ones there as well um, but yeah this is lovely I mean this I think should be not quite touch dry not Debbie quite. nearly did it again let that dry <laughs> and then when you have completed it um, do the other side as well or just keep it as one, wrap nice it up on with some side. tissue paper and then pop that into your uh, box because it is absolutely beautiful. Sorry, what was that? We've got, we've got like a minute, like a minute, James says. So like sorry, a minute. <laughs> thank you very much. Debbie, thank Over you so out. much, so much, so much love for that. Thank you so much for those of you that have been uh, carrying on with that craft along as well. Massive, massive thank you to Len. We're going to be back for Masterclass in an hour's time. Uh, do, if you can do, Send in your photos of your craft along, Crafters Companion, studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk. When it comes to that masterclass, we're going to be having a look at all things when it comes to the tools as well as the adhesives. You're going to be able to stock up on all your adhesives and even some of the tools by having a look across on our website. The best place to go is straight away into shop the day. But we all here as a team, we'll see you in an hour. Bye.